Welcome to the dark side of Asia, a land of ancient superstitions and eternal nightmares. Nightmares turned into blockbuster horror movies by a new breed of filmmakers. Their haunting visions are terrifying audiences worldwide and reinventing the horror film. Why is Asian horror so frightening? Could these tales of terror be more than mere fantasy? In movie theaters across Asia, audiences have been kept on the edge of their seats by films widely considered to be the world's scariest. Asian directors have turned to their roots and come up with a unique brand of horror. Some of the ones that have been most successful, though, from Japan and elsewhere uh, in Asia are, yes, films that, that aren't based on gore, but are based on chills, based on subtle kinds of scares, of dread uh, of the unknown, or of interaction with people from the past, people who are dead, or beings who are supernatural, as opposed to the tendency in Western horror, which uh, for a while hasn't even been supernatural so much, but the psycho killer, the stalker film, the slasher film. Southeast Asia, despite its rapid modernization, it's a land of myths, legends, and widely held beliefs in the supernatural. They make the perfect ingredients for high-octane horror. These films are resurrecting traditional beliefs as a forceful reminder to its audiences not to forget their culture and history. You know how Hollywood films nowadays try to create their own myths? You know, so that the movie has that sense of mythology. But for Asian stories, you do not need to artificially create the myth. The myths are there staring at you every single day. In Indonesia, one of the biggest horror films in recent years was Jalanku. Filmed on video in only nine days at a tenth of the usual budget, the film went on to become bigger than Titanic. The film tells the story of a group of young Ghostbusters who meddle with the supernatural using a traditional spirit doll in a ritual known as Jalanko. But in the end, they pay the ultimate price for their abuse of tradition. In Indonesia, superstitions about the supernatural are not to be tampered with. Beliefs about ghosts and spirits are deeply ingrained in people's minds. Ancient rituals are still practiced to make contact with the spirit world. Here, the supernatural is not just a concept, but a realm that people want to reach out and touch. The spirit doll in Jilankung harks back to traditional animistic beliefs. The idea that spirits can possess a living body or object is widely accepted and put into practice. Here in the village of Grudo, outside Jogjakarta, a unique ritual is taking place. A ceremonial doll is taken out to the local cemetery. Spirits are summoned, and the doll becomes possessed by supernatural forces. While the doll is possessed, it becomes a fortune teller, channeling the spirit's predictions. The villagers have adapted the ceremony to become a common household practice. Families commune with spirits using a Jalankong doll made from a simple gourd that becomes possessed. But if the wrong spirit is invited, the Jalankong can spell trouble. Indonesian filmmakers Rizal Mantovani and Josa Purnomo thought the Jalankung had great horror potential. In their film, one of the group tempts fate and brings a Jalankung doll to a cemetery in a remote bamboo forest. Jalankung! Lu bawa Jalankung ke sini? 
Kita dari tadi tuh nyariin lo. Menjelangkung di atas kuburan lagi. Lu ngapain sih pada menjelangkung-jelangkung begini? Hah? Gua mau pulang nih. Woi! For directors Rizal and Joza, the film is about young people's disrespect towards traditional Indonesian beliefs. The attitude of the uh, younger generation towards the, uh, the culture, sometimes they see it as uh, they mock it, you know. Sometimes they are uh, too uh, cocky about, uh, about stuff. And it shows because uh, uh, I'm actually one of them. I mean, I, I go to the uh, graveyard with my friends and just sit there and, you know, wait for things to happen. And it didn't. And guy home, I go home and we said, ah, there's nothing there. And that kind of attitude, I think, is uh, disrespectful. It's about this bunch of kids who are curious about uh, supernatural, supernatural being and stuff like that. So when they get to the extreme, they, they, they can't handle it. So, so it's like it's the curiosity kills. Jilanka, it has a lot of scares, it makes use of you know, traditional local traditions in terms of horror to help deliver those scares. The sense of using the local tradition but saying, well, what happens now when this local tradition comes to a modern day context? Uh, does the tradition still have its power? Using the power of tradition to instill fear made Jilankung one of the biggest films in Indonesian cinema. <laughs> One of the secrets to his success is that many young Indonesians will have satisfied their own curiosity for the supernatural by experimenting with a Jalankung doll. Assalamualaikum ya para arwah. Mohon bantuannya untuk bisa membantu kami. Wujudkan wujudkan wujud kalian tapi tidak dengan wujud yang seram mohon bantuannya it's friday night in jakarta indonesia a group of young friends are out on the town but this is no ordinary night out they've come to this abandoned colonial hospital in the old town which they hear is haunted they're here to play jalanko and make contact with the spirit world jalankung jalankung datanglah di sini ada pesta Datang tadi jemput, pulang tadi antar. Jalangkung, jalangkung datanglah. Di sini ada pesta. Datang tadi jemput, pulang tadi antar. Baru Mesha. On this occasion, they summon a spirit who lived in this area 300 years ago. The force of the spirits was so strong, it appeared that two members of the group became possessed. <coughs> The film Jalankung tapped into this extraordinary passion that many Indonesians have about ghosts. And it also brought to the big screen an infamous ghost from Indonesia's past, who is still said to haunt this hospital in Old Jakarta.